Trump yeah, I have to get out, have an international election, and let him select it. And you don't think he's going to get out, though. You think he's going to put in whatever needs, and what needs would be depending on how many they send down, and what General Westmoreland requests. That Westmoreland's requests have all been met up to now. That if he has any more, you sure will meet them. But that nobody's against escalating more than Johnson or you. That we don't want any war. That we're trying to get out. But if Bobby's ideas were any good, you don't want to reflect on Bobby. You're his friend, and I'm his friend. We tried to get him elected in New York. We ran a million ahead of. And half ahead of him, but that if they were so good, why well, you ought to give them President Kennedy and let him handle it. Because tell you, Mr. President, I think with Bobby, if I'm the judge of the fellow at all, uh, he's got that little streak in him. I've known this guy since 1951. I've known him probably as well as anybody in this town outside of his own family. And uh, you know, Bobby has just got that deep-seated, deep-rooted uh, kind of mean streak. Let's see, let's face it. He's, uh, he inherited it, and uh, he had it with, and Jack didn't, in those terms. Jack could, uh, you know, kick it around and be one of the boys. Bobby is a tense guy with it's eaten up inside, and uh, I just can't believe that Bobby's motivations uh, are straight out uh, all the time. I think that, uh, uh, unfortunately for him, because he's a basically decent guy, Unfortunately for him, I think that uh, uh, some of the uh, resentments he has outweigh his uh, basic judgment on it sometimes as he starts carving out these roads to travel. Now, the six uh, Democratic congressmen of Iowa, uh, they had this uh, affair honoring them and, uh, in Des Moines, Iowa, Friday night, and they asked me to go be the speaker. So I decided, without checking with them at all, that uh, I don't know anything about all the intricacies of Vietnam. I'm not a foreign policy expert, but my God, I, I'm an American that knows down deep in my heart what we've got to get done. So what I did is I dashed out there, and I gave a speech on Vietnam. And I started the speech by quoting uh, President Kennedy's inaugural address. And then I took it uh, through uh, quotations each year from there and the continuity of our policy there to this moment, and uh, it was about 15 or 16 minutes, and uh, the six congressmen sat there alongside of me, and uh, when I got through, I got a two-minute standing ovation from over 2,000 people. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And, uh, you know, it was just a simple speech. I frankly didn't have time to get into a, a you know, a speech clear to the State Department, something like that. So it was just a very simple statement, a restatement of our policy and statement of our position. Kind of sound like my New York speech. Yeah, well, you used the opener as uh, the same one, didn't you? You, you have the yeah. same quotation in there, that's why. And I, uh, Bobby's got some awfully good quotations. He says, we're out here, President Kennedy sent me out here to tell you that we're out here to stay and to win. Yeah. <laughs> stay until we win. That's what he told him in 62. He was out there. Well, the great danger of all this is fogging it over where people are saying, well, I don't know just what he is saying, but he's saying something that probably means that we're not going to have to pay a greater price or we're not going to have to suffer as long or work as hard as the president said, you know. It gets into that vague area where no one knows really what the hell he's saying, except they get the, they're apt to as this right Now they tell me, I don't know, but they tell me he's been very much in Miami. He was had uh, three or four boys reporting to him, and he's going around, and uh, well, I mean, he says, uh, that he will not criticize Johnson, he likes Johnson, that Mansfield and Dirksen shouldn't have killed his uh, 14B, that Bobby's got some of the uh, uh, New Jersey and New Yorker folks saying, and, well, that the uh, Democrats no good, Johnson's no good, and try and stir that up. Uh -huh. um, so I think that we've got ourselves a variable the tail, and uh, uh, we better get up there, and you better spend a little time with Dirksen on this thing, and just say now, uh, I haven't been bothering you for this reason. The president called me and told me that uh, he didn't want to be twisting arms, and this is a matter for all the country and nothing political, and she had called him, and that she had told him that uh, uh, Mansfield was going to stay another week if you had told him to, and you would handle everything, and that uh, Fulbright was going to stop his hearings, they'd be over, and the bill would be reported, and you'd take it right up. And so he's kind of relying on you to do it. Now, if you can't do that, and we 
we need to get Mansfield back, or if you think that this thing is getting bad for my troops, the lodge men say it's not good out there, and we've got 700,000. We've only got 200,000 old men. We've got 700 of theirs, and everything they're hearing over their television, over their radio is that they're debating the United States Senate whether we ought to pull out and just say, now, we ought to get a vote on this and get it over. We've had all we need of it. And see what Dirks, and, uh, he's the only guy that can really kick and loop them are with us, and if they go with Long and Symington and Dodd and that group, uh, Lausche and Sparkman, they can report that bill without any trouble. And then Dirksen can also influence Russell a good deal if he tells him he's going to make a motion to table. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think it would be a damn good thing if Dirksen made the motion to table. I think it would give the Republicans a little advantage over us, but I think it would show they're nonpartisan and Republican versus Morris. Uh, it would really be better, I guess, if Russell, who's chairman of the committee, made the motion to table. But Nobody's really going to want to vote with Southerners and with Russell on reiterating Johnson's authority. Yeah. I mean, none of the doves. Yeah. They don't want to. They can tell New York Harlem that they 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 didn't want to follow Russell. Yeah. And the best thing to do is just vote Morris up or down on a motion to table. Right. But now get Mike and get him right. to check this tax committee. It could get out of hand awful easy. McCarthy and Hartkin, all of them are raising hell there. We're relying on Dirksen again. Whenever you rely on Republicans, you're a dangerous thing. But those two matters, plus Asian banks, got to be brought up on the floor. So the Senate's uh, uh, kind of in bad shape without any leader for two or three weeks. And you try to let Vallejo know that. And uh, if necessary, tell Mansfield that uh, you want to get his ideas, that you're just kind of watching these things. Uh, and. Uh, I uh, don't really know what I'm unnecessarily concerned, but just get his ideas. When this thing comes up about Mansfield, you meet it head on. Just say the president's taking no such position. He favored Mansfield for foreign relations. He favored him as deputy leader. He made, he favored him as leader. Uh, he would nominate him as leader tomorrow. There's nobody in that Senate that he uh, has been closer to or favors more than Mansfield. He's sorry Mansfield doesn't agree with him on Vietnam. That didn't keep him from sending him around the world, and the reason Fulbright's mad is because he said, and Marcy told the uh, AP boy that uh, Johnson was trying to make Mansfield a foreign policy uh, spokesman instead of uh, uh, Fulbright. So that started it all, and Mansfield ought to be helping us instead of hiding. Yeah. Then let me know afternoon what happened. I will. I'll report back. Uh,